in answer to that question, how do how does the mechanical disturbance make its way from the source to the receivers out along the surface? We found that there were several possible paths that the wave front uh, would travel along, and those included uh, a reflection ray path. We just have the angle of incidence equal to the angle of uh, reflection. We also have a, the wave front traveling out along the surface uh, directly to each of the receivers with a velocity equal to the velocity in this uh, upper layer. Uh, we also had the, the reflection getting to a point where the angle of incidence uh, created an angle of refraction which was equal to pi over 2, and so that that event we refer to as a critical refraction, and it simply travels out along the interface between medium 1 and uh, media 1 and 2, but it travels with velocity v2. So we have these uh, supercritical refraction reflections. These are the reflection events that uh, continue to reflect at angles uh, greater than the critical angle. And those are the wave paths, ray paths that we've discussed so far. We've uh, quantified them and uh, for a very important reason because we don't see the ray paths when we collect data. We see what's called a time distance plot. We have distance out along the surface. That's the source receiver distance. And then we have travel time. And these different events that we pointed out here, the reflection event, the direct arrival, the critical refraction, and so on, they appear differently in the time distance or Tx plot. So when you see a data set like, like this, at this point you should be able to identify the different uh, events that we see. Remember we're dealing with a simple case. We've got a two-layer, a simple two-layer case, two velocities, and the layers are flat. So we have a direct arrival in, traveling along the surface in the upper layer. We have a hyperbolic reflection event, which, uh, remember, it becomes asymptotic to the direct arrival. And uh, it is also traveling with velocity v1, uh, but it's reflecting from points in the, uh, at the interface between uh, layers 1 and 2. <coughs> And then, of course, we have this critical refraction. Remember, the critical refraction uh, doesn't start until we get to this point where the angle of incidence is equal to the critical angle. And uh, this distance here, x min, is also known as the point of tangency. So we don't really see this, we don't see a critical refraction for source receiver distances less than the uh, minimum distance. So this should, should be a pretty familiar looking plot. Um, you know that we can obtain the uh, velocities by calculating the inverse of the slope. So we take the inverse of the slope of the direct arrival, we get V1. Take the inverse of the slope of the critical refraction, we get V2. Uh, this, <clears throat> if we can see it, this point of tangency here, will give us x min, and then we can uh, relate x min to the thickness of the layer and the velocities v1 and v2 as we've shown here. And uh, we also have another point which uh, is often seen in real data, and that's the crossover point. And that would be the point where the distance at which the direct arrival and the critical re refraction come in at the same time so that we have x sub c over v1. This is the direct arrival here. The equation for the direct arrival is equal to x sub c over v plus uh, the intercept here, which is, is this term. And so you can see we're getting different uh, pieces of information from the data set. If we extend this critical refraction over to the time axis, the t x equals zero axis, uh, we get the uh, intercept term, uh, the intercept being b uh, equal to 2h times the square root of e2 squared minus v1 squared over uh, 
v1, v2. We'll often see this uh, radical here. It's pretty common. And uh, so, one of the questions we posed the, the last time was we have these different relationships for the uh, intercept, the uh, minimum distance, the crossover distance, and so on. Using these relationships, uh, we should be able to, de to determine the thickness of the layer H. These are known by measurement. We can get V1 from the slope of the direct arrival, V2 from the slope of the critical refraction. So we have all this information here. We can measure off the intercept and so on. So just looking at the intercept, uh, this implies that uh, you can just go through the algebra here and multiply both sides by V1, V2. Oops, sorry, left off the V2 there. Uh, but I think you can see multiplying both sides by uh, uh, v1, v2, and then dividing uh, by 2 times the square root of v2 squared minus v1 squared. So <clears throat> just replacing uh, b, which is kind of a general uh, notation of one would use for the intercept, y equal mx plus b, um, using t int here. And, and again, uh, sorry, I, I dropped my 2s there. So we can solve for h directly uh, using the refraction time intercept. We could do the same for the point of tangency, uh, just again going through the algebra uh, and um, uh, dividing both sides by v1, multiplying both sides by the square root of v2 squared minus v1 squared. We end up getting uh, h is equal to the minimum distance times the square root of v2 squared minus v1 squared over 2v1. So again, this is just another uh, way of calculating uh, h, the thickness of the layer. And then we have the crossover point. Remember the crossover point? At the crossover point, we have uh, the relationship for the direct arrival is equal to that for the critical refraction. So we have an equivalence here between those two expressions only at this point. Otherwise, they're different. The uh, times are different. So we just rearrange this, and uh, so we're, we're, we're going to uh, uh, subtract x sub c over v2 from both sides of the equation here so that we end up with uh, 2h times the uh, radical over v1, v2 is equal to x sub c, and then we've just you know subtracted x sub c over v2 from x sub c over v1. So we have this expression, and then we're just rearranging these terms, putting them over a common denominator, v1, v2. So that we then have that uh, this term then is equal to this term. And, uh, and then we solve for, for h, and we can go through some further uh, reductions here in order to show that h is equal to the crossover distance times v2 minus v1 over 2 times the square root of v2 squared minus v1 squared. So, so we have three different ways of estimating h here uh, using the refraction time intercept, the point of tangency, the crossover point, and so on. Um, just <clears throat> should have pointed out earlier on that there's an additional piece of information that we can use. Uh, if we can see this reflection time intercept, uh, then we have an additional data point. We know that the reflection time intercept is just the straight up and down time in this um, um, uh, horizontal layer case. So it's just equal to uh, the ray path is just twice the thickness of the layer, and it's traveling at a velocity equal to the velocity in layer one that, that we get from the slope. So we just have 2h over over v1. And uh, so we, we can see that we can get these basic uh, time distance relationships. We can get information from, from a data set that looks like this. This would be a data set that we would collect in the field. And uh, uh, the critical refraction again, uh, just as in summary, appears as straight line. And this is a TX plot or a time distance plot or a shot record. Uh, the refraction and the direct arrivals coincide at uh, one offset. That's the crossover distance. Uh, the refraction and the reflection arrivals coincide at uh, uh, one offset. 
to the point of tangency. The refraction arrivals follow a straight line with slope 1 over slope of this line is 1 over v2. And 1 over v2 is obviously going to be less than 1 over v1 since v2 is greater than v1. So we get the information from the slopes, rv1 and rv2. We have the uh, minimum offset, the point of tangency. We have the crossover point. And then we have the two intercepts. So basic data and uh, that, that you would see in a um, shot record. And uh, so let's pose a problem and so that you can use what you've learned to answer questions about the uh, subsurface physical properties associated with the uh, shot response. And this would be what you see. And the problem would be to make measurements on this. We've been looking at it long enough. Uh, you're probably wondering, uh, well, can I figure out uh, what uh, the thickness of the layer is? What is the velocity? What is V1? What is V2? Uh, what is the minimum offset? And so on. So uh, the problem is to determine uh, H using three different approaches. Uh, note the influence of measurement error on your estimates. Uh, obviously, you're, you know, you're probably, with real data and also with this data set here, you're probably not going to, going to get the same answer, uh, the same thickness uh, using each different approach because there's going to be some error in how I measure the crossover distance, how I measure the minimum uh, point of tangency, x, x min, so on and so forth. We're all probably going to come up with slightly different numbers. So, so note that influence. Remember, you've always got error in your data. So uh, it's worth uh, keeping that in mind as you measure off these different uh, points uh, in the uh, data set and take advantage of them in order to calculate the uh, thickness of the layer. So here's another problem, and in this problem, pretty much asked to do the same thing, uh, unfortunately, or probably more likely for most real data, especially shallow data. We don't see this x min, and uh, the reflection events also are just, just kind of hard to see. Uh, we can see some deviation from linearity at the longer offsets, but uh, I'm calling these reflections. They seem to have some drop with, uh, with offset, but you might argue with me on that. But you can see that we have linear events here. We have a linear event we're labeling as A. It extends back to zero. This would be the zero, x equals zero location here. Uh, we have event B and event C. And these are both uh, approximately linear events. So your problem is to identify the direct arrival, critical refraction from the base of the upper layer, determine the velocities, and estimate the thickness of the upper layer. So we're just dealing with the upper two layers. Note that there is a critical refraction from a deeper layer. We could come back to this problem later on and ask you to solve for the thickness of the second layer. but. Uh, uh, event C is identified as a refraction. This would be a um, refraction from an underlying layer. Uh, what is its uh, velocity? Might add that to the problem. And we'll consider uh, multi-layer problems after um, discussion of, um, of uh, a dipping layer problem. Actually, I think we'll go to the multi-layer problems and then the dipping layer uh, problems. So. Uh, but next time, we're going to just discuss the answers to uh, these two problems that we've posed. So I'd ask you, I'd encourage you to take a few minutes and uh, apply what you've learned in terms of the analysis. I, yeah, I'm sure you guys are doing great. I think you're, you know, you're, you're picking up these ideas. And uh, I appreciate your um, watching the videos. And I uh, hope, hope to see you next time.